वन थिंग आई टोल्ड यू गैस टू डू जस्ट वन थिंग वन डे आई एम बिजी तो आप लोग को सब कुछ संभालना था वन डे यू कुंड डू वन डे यू कुंड डू दैट्स आई बी हैविंग सम हार्श वर्ड्स विद माई डियर ब्रदर्स मिस्टर हर्ष अभोगले एंड मिस्टर दिनेश कार्तिक एक दिन नहीं संभाल जस्ट बिकॉज वी आर नॉट इन योर सोशल लीग यू कॉन कम डाउन हैवी ऑन अस सर यू गैस अब सोशल वर्किंग सिंपल पीपल यू आर वॉचिंग गेम टॉकिंग अबाउट इट दैट्स ट्रू एंड आई वॉज हैविंग पाव पार्टी ऑन माई साइकिल आउटसाइड But that doesn't mean you make fun of us. Team and India can do parties. without Rohit Sharma, without Virat Kohli, but Correct. not without Gaurav Kapoor. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, इसलिए आपने घबराना नहीं है क्योंकि मैं आ गया हूँ. All right. Hello and welcome to Crick Buzz Live. India is down one zero, but India will be winning the series two one because I'll be here today and on the first. And well, I guess that's all we have on the show. But मैं आ गया हूँ. Talking about Pathan has been released and you were like मैं आ गया हूँ. मैं आ गया हूँ. अब गौरव कपूर के घर में पार्टी रखोगे तो गौरव कपूर आएगा मेहमान नवासी भी करेगा और पटाखे भी लाएगा खैर ये जो पटाखे हैं दीज आर ऑल ग्राफिक्स राइट सो इन्वायरमेंट इज नॉट गेटिंग हर्ट इन दैट सो एवरीबॉडी कैन रिलैक्स एंड काम डाउन बट लेट्स टेल यू हु इज हर्ट इंडियन टीम इज प्रॉब्ली हर्ट आफ्टर द लास्ट गेम बिकॉज दे नॉट यूज टू बींग डाउन इन अ बायोलैट्रल सीरीज दे डेफिनेटली नॉट यूज टू लूजिंग बायोलैट्रल सीरीज ठीक है यू नो वी जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द अदर डे यू नो इट्स एन it's a great mountain to climb for any visiting team to beat india and in india yeah. in any format t20 odi or test and i think that seems to keep getting stronger by the day mm-hmm. and you know new zealand obviously have the upper hand for a you know it's a rare occasion but they do seem to have gone 1-0 up recently against australia in the t20 series that happened before the world cup australia were 1-0 up again i think uh, you know the forefront of india came there and uh, you know we ended up winning 2-1 had some terrific games there yeah. but again this new zealand series and that's good to watch i feel bilaterals you want to be challenged you want to be where team india is right now not because i like them to lose but because at least you can simulate a little bit of pressure that you feel in knockout games sure. in world cups and I, and i like that about you know i like going into these games with a lot to play for especially Pride on the line right now, you know, second game, and then we move on to the third game. But for the moment, if there is a simulation possible close to ICC tournaments, then this is probably the closest you yeah. can get. I really like that point actually because that's something that we talk about a lot, uh, Arsha. That India does so well in bilateral series, and it's always about that one knockout game. And it's DK says it, Viru, Ajay, you. We've all discussed it so much, but it's such a valid point, and this is the only way you can simulate it. That's a great word. It's the best way to simulate it because that today you lose out yeah. of the series. That's why I was very, I was very hopeful that India wins bilateral series three zero, not just two one. Yeah. But go and win it three zero. Go at two zero and say, right, this is my knockout game now, yeah. and win three zero. Don't give the opposition a whiff. Always be happy playing front runner. And to be fair, even though there have been a few two-one series, India has been outstanding. अब तो अगर तुम सोच रहे हो ना मेरे हाथ में कागज क्यों मैं थोड़ा होमवर्क करके आया? क्या है सर कोई कुछ नहीं शेयर वेयर लेके आया? नहीं मैं थोड़ा होमवर्क करके आया थोड़ी नंबर्स लिख के लाया हूँ because हाँ नंबर्स ही आपकी शायरी है सर no no because BK knows all these numbers top of his head so I have to write them down really does he अरे do you what are you okay ठीक है come on okay I'll I'll check with ठीक है ठीक है what number am I thinking of <laughs> I'll tell you what. I just told you backstage that you know the other day probably I wasn't at my best and I was like, wow, you know, I thought we had a fabulous show and I was like, how am I going to even speak with Arsha? And no, no, I'm but, just waiting to see what is going to happen no, today. No, no, but honestly. the numbers are very interesting. India have never lost a three-game bilateral series at home ever, ever, ever. India have lost four, but they've all been under three. Two of them were two-game series. सर टू गेम सीरीज ऑस्ट्रेलिया के खिलाफ आई रिमेंबर देयर वाज टू जीरो तो मैं काउंट ही नहीं करता उसके पहले दो वन गेम वन गेम सीरीज थे सो इंडिया हैज नेवर लॉस्ट अ थ्री गेम सीरीज सो व्हेन यू हियर द ऑजीज से दैट दिस इज द फाइनल फ्रंटियर दैट दिस इज लाइक क्लाइंबिंग एवरेस्ट दैट्स व्हाट द ऑजीज हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड सेइंग अहेड ऑफ द टेस्ट सीरीज दिस इज लाइक क्लाइंबिंग एवरेस्ट यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई दे आर सेइंग इट्स लाइक क्लाइंबिंग एवरेस्ट बिकॉज़ यू डोंट कम हियर एंड विन Yeah. I think sometimes we're too harsh on ourselves when we say we don't win overseas ye ghar ka theek hai it's okay Now you must have a great home record, then have a good overseas record. Yeah. So yeah, there's, I, there's, I mean, there is that saying, right, in Hindi, which is that home chicken is uh, like uh, equal to pulses, right? Yes. Ghar ki murki dal bada bada. Correct. But the fact is Sir, that if you had not said, we would have realized. You would have understood. Yeah, would have understood. Uh, also, for Australia, I feel if at all there is, uh, 
you know, there's a chance I feel that they're playing very close to Everest in one of the test matches. They should, I hopefully, have a good result there. <laughs> that is a venue which India in many ways won't have home conditions, including the weather. Yeah. But we'll get to that. That's a little yeah, later. Yeah. Right now, wait. We to go to News Australia, you have to go via New Zealand. You don't actually, but no. we're going in reverse. Some so people have had to during the uh, during COVID. Yeah. The only flights that were coming to Australia were from New Zealand. So you, if you're okay to go to New Zealand, you have to go to New Zealand to come to. It's like yeah, some people had to go to England via Serbia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, hoping oh. it doesn't get there. Oh. <laughs> and look at the company you had. I remember uh, this. Correct. Terrific. For company I mean, you had Mr. Gavaskar. Absolutely. 10 days of uh, a lot of fun. And a, and a lot of anecdotes and stories, I'm sure, because he, he really lets them rip sometimes. So let me tell you what uh, happened at the toss. Uh, New Zealand has won the toss and decided to bat first. And Hardik Pandya said that uh, he would have liked to bat first as well. So, what are they seeing in the surface? Well, uh, we'll tell you after we discuss the yes, teams. There was a lot of discussion. Mm. I think in the first game, it's fair to say that there, it was a track that was giving turn. So, classic subcontinent track, right? What Australia talks about, final frontier. But New Zealand seemed to be better equipped in the spin department. At, at least, uh, you know, in terms of quantity, they had more people there. So, let's just talk about quantity because they showed their quality as well. They went in with those spinners and now the, the question for India today was, would India pay the extra spinner? Come on, tell us, have they opened the app, sir, so you know. I'm doing a crick boss, so I'll open the app, right? But we don't take our phone, right? We don't get our phone only. This is cheating. You're cheating, sir. You're cheating, sir. There's no respect for age in crick boss, I tell you. So, well, here's the answer to the question. So, it turned out to be a rhetorical question. <laughs> is that India has decided to play a spinner for a quick bowler. So, Yuzi Chehel comes in, in place of Umran Malik. Uh, and hopefully, this is just a horses for courses situation. Play and we don't read too much into the fact that Umran only bowled the over that day. Let's not read too much into that. Hopefully, it's not a performance thing and it's a conditions thing, DK. I mean, to be fair, I think it could be a performance thing as well. But in this case, I would like to admit it's a horses for courses because when we see the wicket, we obviously can see it's rather brown and it looks like laid spin as well. But Umran Malik, to be fair, hasn't had a great run in T20 so far. He's played yeah. close to seven games now. His economy is upwards of 10. And there's only one game in these seven games that he's bowled less than seven runs and over. And yeah. others, every, every game has gone upwards of 10. So, yeah. you know... To be fair to uh, Umran, I think uh, he will know that, uh, you know, in the future, he has to obviously work on various areas of his game. And the IPL is going to be very critical for him. He burst into, uh, you know, in everybody's faces in the IPL. And I think when he goes back to IPL this year, it will be a completely different challenge. And it will be something that will be very rewarding for him if he does well. Yeah. And he will learn a lot as well. Yeah. The other thing with Umran is he's got, he's got certain limitations, either perceived or real. Which is that he can only bowl at a certain stage. So, yeah. when you're playing in franchise cricket, you say, okay, I'll bowl 7 to 6, 17. Say 7 to 17, I'll give you 2, 3 wickets. Wow, middle overs, bowler who takes wickets, worth his weight in gold. But when you come to international cricket, then you have to be able to be a little more flexible. When Umran bowls at the death, he's expensive. When he bowls in the power play, he's expensive. So, at international level, you can't say, I'll only use him in those periods. Mm. So, part of his development will be to be able to bowl at different stages in the innings. Yeah. So, you look at a young kid like Naseem Shah, for example, in, in Pakistan. He comes and bowls at the start of the inning sometimes. Yeah. So, slowly, I think Umran will have to grow his game to be able to bowl even when there's only two fielders outside. Yeah. Where the top yeah. edges will travel, that's okay. But you've got to be able to bowl with only two outside. Yeah. I'd like to see him bowl the York a little bit more, the short ball. But he has what nobody else has. And that's a great way to… that's a great place to start. Yeah. Raw pace is raw pace. Yeah, I think he's better at o ODI cricket at the moment. I still think he's a Yeah, ODI that was boy. the thing, right? When he was playing ODI cricket, I remember we were in New Zealand that time. And we were there. I think the main discussion point was that he's, you know, only played T20 cricket. Can he sustain that pace over 10 overs? Because we'd only seen him in four. Now, maybe that's the lack in our imagination where we think that four and can't translate into 10. But he's been very good with 10. So there's no reason why he can't do these things and grow into a strike bowler. I mean, it's, he has taken nine wickets in these games. I mean, to be fair, I think he's an absolute talent. There is yeah. no doubt about it. We're all excited for one reason. We haven't seen anybody from our soil bowl that kind of pace, get the stumps flying consistently. The one good thing with him is, in these 12 months, he's not dropped pace. He's there at 150, yeah. 152. The challenge for him is, I can see if he keeps bowling at this pace with his action, uh, injury is something that he could be round the corner. He needs to be very aware of it, number one. Yeah. And two, another bowler who is very similar but has got one skill better than him and that's natural is height and that's Prasid Krishna. He has been injured for some time. So, when he comes back in that one-day scheme of things, that's going to be interesting because he's somebody who bowls up front at the death 
and he's somebody who's able to pick wickets in the middle as well as we saw in the series against England. Mm. So that will be the challenge for him. But for the moment, you have to say Umran Malik is a special talent. He is somebody that we have not seen from India so far and to bowl that kind of pace and makes it look good to watch as well. But there are areas that he definitely has to work on. Okay, let's uh, have a look at New Zealand though. They felt like they had no areas to work on from the first game to the second. And that's why they've gone in with the same 11 because as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they've gone with Finn Allen, Devin Conway. Uh, you have Mark Chapman, Daryl Mitchell, Glenn Phillips, Michael Bracewell, Mitchell Santner, Ish Sodhi, Jacob Duffy, Loki Ferguson and Blair Tickner. You look at that team and what I think of is hashtag options. Yes, hashtag options, but they've chosen to bat first. Yeah. If it is indeed what Ajit said at the pitch report, Ajit Agarkar called it tacky, which is a very popular word for pitch reports these days. Yeah. He said it's, it's a bit tacky and he said it's dry Closer to the stumps on either side. Yeah. So what India will be hoping for, it's a 7 o'clock start. But if in, if there's dew around 8.39, you've got the dry surface to get them out quickly and then you bat, un, bat under lights. Yeah. So India have got three spinners too. So if you can get into the wickets early, that side has options in bowling but not as many in batting because they bat till 7. 7 is seven. Then in after that, yeah. In, in the beer is batting at 8. Or yeah. Lockie Ferguson. Come on, in the beer's all right. In the beer is okay. He's swing his bat around. He's a character, but if he's coming into bat, you're not like shaking in your boots. Right? <laughs> yeah, but in a T20 team, anyway, getting a solid bat at eight is... is no, I mean, you don't want a solid bat. But yeah. if, you, if you get into the wickets quickly, the batters at the crease will say, Oops, I've got Indirbir and Lockie to come. <laughs> That's right. Yes, so, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, the pitch... Tacky, that is uh, only something that is referred to uh, my conversational style after two drinks in the evening. So, we don't know what that means. But in terms of the pitch... <laughs> tacky is exactly what it is. Sticky. So, that would mean that if there is... There could be a bit of sweet seam movement. But more importantly, when the spinners will hold a bit in turn. And that's exactly what we saw in Ranchi as well. And we thought, wow, New Zealanders are going to struggle here. But I must say, Devon Conway, you know... You, Batted beautifully at a very critical phase of the game when the spinners yeah. were bowling before <clears throat> Daryl Mitchell obviously finished off very, very well. Again, the conditions, I hope, are not very similar, are much better to bat on and that would mean India have a better chance. But if it's similar to what it is, interestingly, at least on paper, New Zealand have five spin options. I mean, if you add Mark Chapman and uh, Glenn Phillips to it, they have five spin options apart from the three regular spinners they have. So, they have yeah. a well-rounded bowling attack, but their batting... I think Harsha absolutely nailed it when he said that the batting is light. It looks like they are batting till 7. But in many ways, there are proper all-rounders there in Bracewell and, and Santner. And they haven't played so much in India. Especially Bracewell, not so much yeah. Santner. <coughs> you know, just put that team. There's something interesting in that team from mm. DK's perspective. Michael Bracewell is the off-spinner. Yeah. But he's also kept wickets. Yep. Glenn Phillips was a keeper who gave up keeping to Correct. field in the deep and bowl off-spin. Yeah. And we are stuck with a keeper who doesn't bowl in our studio. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Why you don't you bowl, bowl off-spin? Perfect. No, all keepers bowl off-spin. Absolutely. No, I started with leg spin. I, I used to go for two uh, coaching sessions. Morning I went, that coach changed my action. Then by evening, the other coach changed my action. Then the second day I said, I'm done with bowling. They, so, you were a leg spin out keeper? I was a leg spin out Breaking keeper. news. All keepers are wannabe spinners. That is true. And all <laughs> opening batters are want to be opening bowlers, a quick bowlers. Correct. <laughs> That's something you learned from but Mr. Gavaskar. Exception is Dhoni. He was a medium pacer. He never bowl spin. I never saw him bowl spin. Dhoni no. always liked bowling medium Correct. pace. And then, you know, he, he bowled in international games as well. Yeah. That's true. He's bowled, I think, in a Champions Trophy. He's bowled like yeah, four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, well. LBW as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F famous quiz question that Joy also might ask someday. Yeah. Which yeah. is the game in which both captains kept wickets and bowled? Was that just AB and, uh, I don't know, AB and MS? Yeah, but I, MS claims he got Peterson out, but yes, he got did. DRS. DRS yeah, there was yeah. Uh, I just I don't think Joy would ever ask such a simple question. He would definitely not ask a question. If like, all yeah. three of us know the answer, I don't think that Joy <laughs> would be asking that question. I can guarantee you that. All right, uh, let's have a look at the Indian team again because it's quite interesting. I want to talk about the curious chase of Chehel. Okay, because here's Yuzi Chehel doesn't play in the 2021. The 2020-2020, which happened in 2021, he didn't play in that. And then they picked him for the 2020 World Cup in 2022. Played all the games between those two World Cups. And suddenly it comes play. to the World Cup and they forget he's there. You were there as well. So Was I? Okay. You'll probably tell us what happened there. But anyway, <laughs> that he's not was there. a statement that was pregnant with possibilities of interpretation. Yeah. Was I. That's why I just come, just moved on really quickly because I could tell the paps were going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, Relax okay. everybody. Back away from your Twitter. Put your Twitters away. 
coming back to Chell, uh, comes, we, we start again and now suddenly there's this emergence of Kuldeep and yeah. of course we've lived through the glorious era of Kulcha where they blow, both played together but now so much carb is not good for anybody so it's either Kul or it's Cha. Today we're seeing Kulcha operate together after a long time. And that's the good thing. I think it's good to see both of them together playing. They did some really good things before the 2019 World Cup. When they just started out, they did phenomenally well. And since 2019 World Cup, I think things have changed and the people have changed. The bowling action has changed. The run-up has changed. Everything has changed. But I must say, Kuldeep, if I had to put it in a nutshell, is probably and interestingly slightly more improved. Uh, yeah. You know, Especially, I think he went through a hard gruel. I mean, he was with me at KKR, had some tough seasons there. We, literally, we released him and... Uh, you know, what was good to see is he went back to the drawing board, worked on his action, technically changed it, came much straighter, got much more revs into the ball. And today he is what he is. And the good thing is he's playing all three formats. Whereas Chehel is a very interesting case study. I think, just like you said, he played all the T20s in between. But why did he have to miss out in the World Cup? Obviously, I think Ashwin started because of the matchup against Pakistan. Akshar was obviously a no-brainer because we had to get somebody to bat at number seven. I personally thought at some stage probably Chahal would play but he didn't end up playing because Ashwin did one thing very well. He bowled very economically. Yeah. But the one thing that we couldn't manage to do in the World Cup that recently concluded was the fact that we didn't pick wickets through the middle at times. Mm. And that was where I felt Chahal could have been very, very interesting choice. But they hung on to Ashwin because to be fair to him, he did well. He kept doing something that was important for the team. But more importantly, he was giving us a little bit of the bat as well. Every time he would come and he would hit a couple of boundaries. It's very easy to say in hindsight that probably Chahal could have played but with the way things were unfolding at that stage, that would have been a big decision. Because here was a guy who was not giving runs, bowling steady, giving you a couple of boundaries with the bat every time he walked in. Would you go to a pure bowler who would not give you batting, but then probably give you a few wickets through the middle? So I think that was a choice they went for the former. We can always debate about it. But for the moment, it's good to see Chahel back. But what he has done in the recent past is, I, I personally feel, when he has bowled in speeds upwards of 90 or close to 90, he's been far more effective. Mm. Sometimes he can go searching for wickets. And when the pace dips much below 80, that's when he's been taken down at times. I think it's worked well for him in Rajasthan Royals because that's the role they want him to do. Around him are defensive bowlers. But when he comes to Team India, you know, there are a few attacking options there as well. So when he needs to pick wickets, I think he takes the option where he wants to bowl slowly. And that, if in case that goes for runs and that's when he's found wanting. But yeah. you put him under pressure, he bowls at a speed which suits him, which is tough for the batter. But he doesn't want to do it consistently because that doesn't give him the wickets. And it's a bit of a catch-22 situation for him. Yeah. But I'd rather have him bowl those speeds closer to 90, yeah. which will mean that... He might not get as many wickets, but he'll be very effective as a bowler. But that's a choice that he has. His, to his temperament is yeah. that of an attacking bowler yeah, anyway, was, right? That's the kind of temperament that he has. We had Sangakara with us in the commentary box recently. Yeah. And he was so impressed. Again, with the way, Rajasthan. Yeah, yeah, with the way Chahal assesses a situation and, and the ideas he comes up with in situations. He rates Chahal very highly. But there's two reasons why Chahal will be... Uh, two things going in his favour now. One is, if you look at the composition of that team again... Hardik Pandya is bowling again and is even capable, should you need, of giving you four overs. Absolutely. So, if he can give you four overs, you've got three seamers already in there. Mavi can bowl anywhere, Arshdeep can bowl anywhere. So, you've now got the flexibility. Hardik can bowl two if you need 12 overs of seam. So, that means that you that is the only way in which you can get uh, both, uh, uh, both spinners play. Yeah. Because the two spinners have to play in a three-spinner combination because your spinner is batting at seven. Mm. So, if Hardik can do the third seamer's role, then you can play Kulcha. Yeah. The other thing in his favour today is the boundaries. Yeah. The boundaries are 76, 78 straight down the ground, even 67, 68 square. And he must be saying, when was the last time I got to bowl on 78, 80 metre boundaries, yeah. playing as he does all for the last few years where? In Bangalore. In Bangalore, where the boundaries are about 35. So, he's just <laughs> hoping, he's just hoping no due today. Big boundaries, dryish ground. Let yeah. me get my four overs in in these situations. Yeah, and great. It's India's bowling first anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. even the chance of due, I mean, that's that's in their favour and definitely in the favour uh, of the leg spinner. But well, we're talking a lot about spin. But in India, as cricket fans, in the last few years, we've been talking a lot about pace. This uh, quick bowling revolution uh, that we've witnessed. And here at Crick Buzz, we've got a show to tell you about that uh, and how that story has evolved and developed. And now, I'm going to clap my hands twice and that will be a signal to our director to play the promo <laughs> of said show.
That's right. That's on Crick Bus Plus. So please uh, sign up. Please subscribe. That show is going to be streaming really soon worldwide. Uh, and we'd love for you uh, to catch that. I'm going to ask DK a quick question. Out of all this young crop, and you played all of them in the nets, who's the one that you find the trickiest or the cleverest or the wiliest? And who is not injured? <laughs> <laughs> I think the most talented is Mohamed Siraj. Yeah? Nice. Good call. I, I, I like him because... He was a genuine outswinger with a good bouncer, but then he's got the ball to come back in. He's got the ball to seam in. And what I like most about him is he values test cricket the most. And hence, he's got a lot of overs under his legs. And that I like a lot about him. And that's going to help him in longevity over a period of time. Nice. Yeah. I just loved that animation, man. I just loved it's it. pretty cool. If you want to understand why for players of a certain generation or watchers of a certain generation that is special, Go back and look at scorecards from the late 60s, early 70s. We are little kids, you know, reading scorecards, don't get to see the game. <laughs> and see the score, uh, see the bowling analysis. Yeah. Opening the bowling, Tiger Pataudi, Budhi Kundaran, V Subramanya from, from Bangalore. Sunil Gavaskar. Sunil Has Gavaskar opened. was different league. He bowled nine overs once. Oh, wow. <laughs> and who are the new ball bowlers? Abid Ali. Eknath Solkar, who was a left-arm spinner, converted into a new ball bowler. Then when fast bowling came, Madan Lal and Mohinder Amarnath. Wow. Let's look at the bowling figures pre Kapil Dev. Your yeah. best fast bowler was Karsan Ghavri. Almost yeah. half his wickets are bowling. Ramakanth Desai? Earlier. Yeah. Earlier. Ramakanth got 70 odd test wickets. Yeah. Karsan Ghavri got 100 plus test wickets. Half of those was spin. Really? Yeah, he used to bowl left arm spin. I didn't know. Because this. he used to hit the deck and bowl left arm spin. So, and he had that funny agonism. He used to hit the deck. Yeah. He got a lot of wickets bowling spin. So that was the state. Then Kapil Dev came and suddenly you had Kapil Dev one end, Karsan Ghavri at one end. And we thought, okay, we can... But this generation, uh, with Bumrah and Ishant and Shami and Siraj, and then look at the backup around them, Shardul, Prasid, all these guys is fantastic. Riches. The riches. I fantastic. still, I still remember. Unimaginable. That as a kid, the team of the 90s that went to Australia, which had four quick bowlers. And as Indian cricket fans, you know what? There was Javagal Srinath. There was Kapil Dev, of course. Jav, young Javagal Srinath, uh, Manoj Prabhakar and Subroto Banerjee. The four of them went. Yes. New Zealand and yes. Australia. Yes. The era slightly before that, if we said quick bowlers, people would say no. New ball bowlers. Yeah, that's true actually. The difference between quick bowler and new ball bowler. That's right. And Tiger Pataudi used to roll the ball from the first over. Yeah. Roll the ball back. The spinners would come on third, fourth over. I wonder why they took the new ball too. There's no rule. There was no rule then that you had to start with a new ball. They might as well have started with an old one. Sir, new ball se yaad aaya. If I just turned it a little bit from new ball, no ball. Right? At the reason. <laughs> Very poor segue. But still we had to move to the next thing. I know why. Normally, <laughs> normally with the young people around, I don't like saying no because that's not a word in my dictionary. Uh, but we have to use it because India does seem to have a no ball problem. DK, when will we say no to the no balls? We've got to say no to the no balls because, hey, listen, I mean, in all fairness, no bowler goes out there to bowl a no ball, right? Uh, but the other teams are managing to actually not bowl them. And India is bowling them. Uh, so therefore, as uh, those numbers tell you, it is a problem that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. I think uh, Paras Mambre obviously has a massive job on his hand. And I think yeah. when you reach this stage and... Um, what happens is when you practice and when you're doing something well, you need to create awareness around what you're doing well. Bowling a no ball is as simple as, you know, you're holding both, uh, you're using both your hands to hold the ball at the start and you're running in and you don't bowl a no ball. But or when you bowl a no ball, you're probably running in one hand. It's some, something as simple as that. You could be starting with your left foot normally, but by mistake, you're starting with your right foot. You know, you're angled towards the crease. There are many things, but they're all very small, simple things. And no ball is basically awareness around your run-up and, and at the point of delivery where you land. These are the two basic things. And that's why most, if you see a lot of bowlers, actually, when they when they practice, they bowl big no balls. You, yeah. you know, some some people have also said, I mean, some yesterday cricketers also in many ways say that there's no way they should be doing that. But you ask a lot of the bowlers, like El Balaji was a big example. He used to bowl massive no balls, but in the game, he hardly bowled one. So it's a habit. He is confident of his rhythm in a game and he just wants to obviously not put so much effort into it while rolling the net. So the different people look at it differently, but 
when you see the younger crop of bowlers bowling it, I will definitely put it down to lack of awareness. It's a technical thing because if you bowl one, if you bowl two, then it's okay. But if you're bowling many, it's a technical thing. And if you, only if you create awareness around what your bowling is, your run up, your rhythm and your point of jump, that is when you can get better at it. And that is something definitely Paras Mambre needs to have a look at it. Especially in T20, sometimes when you're playing test cricket, is the last spell, you're tired, you're trying harder and your front foot goes, goes over yeah, the line. Yeah. And you, if you see the best bowlers, they always cut the line. They don't go beyond because you, you don't want to bowl from six inches behind. Yep. Why do you want to give the batter six extra inches of the ball to travel? So they won't go as close and sometimes they, they push over. In test cricket, it's a bad ball to bowl, but it's okay. But in T20 cricket, like we saw the other day, yeah. Arshdi bowls a no ball that goes for six. Then the next free hit goes for six. You've conceded effectively 13 yeah. of, of one ball. Yeah. And then it became 19 of two and now suddenly he's all flustered. Yeah. So it, it is in, in the pantheon of crimes, it is uh, at the very highest in T20 cricket. It does in T20 cricket because the margins are so small that the minute you do something like this, it almost becomes an unforgivable sin not to be hard on you know, the youngster, any bowler. No one's doing it on purpose. But you have to realize that because of the cascade effect that it can have on the result of a game, this is something that has to be addressed on a war footing. But that's what good batters do, right? They take advantage of that because you could tell like Arjdeep bowled that no ball and lost his rhythm for that third ball, effectively giving 19, right? Uh, so you, you lose that rhythm. So that's a, a good batter will make you pay. And here's Daryl Mitchell doing something that you expected Glenn Phillips to do, who got stuck the other day. But Daryl Mitchell uh, is suddenly become this, this finisher. That's what I'm saying. It's the options that, yeah. that New Zealand seem to have. And, and, and look at this guy. I mean, he literally he won them the game that day. Finn Allen played really well. Of course, Conway got that 50. But he really won them that game with that late surge because that can really break your spirit going into uh, the halftime. Absolutely. In the, he was 32 of 24. It's not like he got off to a blitzkrieg. He was actually very wary against spin. In many ways, he was trying hard. He wasn't exactly getting rhythm while batting. But that last over completely changed the whole outlook of how he batted. He ended up 30 ball 50, which is phenomenal at that stage. And, and that's what you want a late order batter to do. But he's actually a number four. He doesn't you know, bat too low. He bats at number five, sorry. Yeah. So he's somebody who is expected to do this, but more so steady the ship if, if wickets fall early, which is he came in at a very crunch situation because Glenn Phillips was somebody who's in good form. He's done well, gets out. And then he comes, takes his time, doesn't do anything fancy, but towards the end, he really made India count. He did that in the semi-final, if you remember. T20 yep. World Cup yep. against England. Yeah, he did. He did. So, it's just like I'm telling you, New Zealand options. So, with their batting as well, yes, they're batting till 7, uh, but they've got some solid quality and mm. people have different gears. Like Conway the other day batted pretty much like Finn Allen did, but in the end, when you look at the tally and look at the strike rate, but he approached his innings differently. So, that's what's so interesting about He's New Zealand CSK batting. player. Hmm? He's a CSK player. He'll bat like CSK that. players. CSK players just know, basically. Uh, CS they just know. Uh, but he'll, he'll bat like that. Unhurried, calm. Yeah. And but, but, but he's a fabulous player. He's a, what I, I think if Finn Allen gets off to a start, it makes it much easier for, yeah. for Devon Conway. And that's Finn, the job. We were talking the other day, Finn Allen and Glenn Phillips with uh, with Conway in between. Chapman Chapman gets a move on. I mean, he's moved from Hong Kong to New Zealand. Yeah. But he, he gets a move on as well. Yeah. So Conway is that key player across, across formats. He's a fabulous player. We, of course, will talk about the India openers as well. But we'll do that in uh, the halftime show, which is also popularly known as the mid show because it's in the middle of the game. Uh, but right now, before we ask the Joy Factor question, I have a question for both of you. Uh, I Don't look at me with stuff. Look there. No, very simple question. Huh? It's a fielding question because the other day I liked two fielding efforts a lot. One was Ishan Kishan with that run out, right? One was Washington Sundar with the caught in bolt. So now we have a wicket keeper over here. And he'll, obviously he'll you are a lover of all rounders. He'll, he'll say run out because that was the keeper's, the keeper's wicket, no? Yeah, but they, see, one side he's the wicket keeper, but other side is his boy, Washington Sundar. But boy, I mean, he's also his part time Correct. housekeeper. When they're in uh, London, Correct. he Correct. makes him do the housework and all by yeah. being the big brother in the house. Like you do, washy coffee lao types? Yeah, like that. Like he does, <laughs> he, he does, he does that. He's like, put the laundry in, do all of that. I guess it builds character, right? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like in the old public schools, you had this washes. You're ragging him, basically. Yeah, how I wish that was true, you know. It's actually the other way around to a point. He rags you. Oh, he does. A lot. Because he's taller. Yeah, and he's stronger also. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I really like Washington's effort. I think that was a terrific yeah. catch. 
The, it takes a massive effort to get there. Yes, being tall helped, but just hold on to that catch. It was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. The, also what he did in that over to get that, right? I mean, he really troubled uh, Spinners Jack love cotton bold, man. Spinners love cotton bold because it means you've done them in the air. The, the footwork is wrong. You've, you've induced a mistake. What I like with wicket keepers doing the run out is when a wicket keeper is doing that, you're getting an extra fielder inside the circle. Yeah. If the wicket keeper can be an extra fielder inside the circle, then it helps a lot, especially if he's got that eye, you know, dead eye took, if he can hit it. Yeah. So then suddenly it gives you that extra, extra option. Yeah. So. Fair. So you basically said both. <laughs> <laughs> but not, you I, should be in parliament. You'll just keep calling out everyone's speeches for saying nothing. Yeah. No. <laughs> nobody will listen over there. I'll just be like the speaker going, Ben Jaye! Ben Jaye! Okay. Aap uh, sab bed jaye, because the joy factor question is coming. And this one, has only one correct answer. Tom Latham is the last cricketer to achieve this in test cricket. A South African has accomplished it thrice, the last in 2018. Which achievement? I'll tell you, sir, it's very simple. He once said 46 Pani Puris in one go. <laughs> I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. It actually, can I tell you something? With joy factor questions, it could be as bizarre as that. Maybe not Pani Puri because I don't think they have it in New Zealand, but it could be something as bizarre no, as No, no, they could have it in New Zealand. When you and I were in New Zealand, we only met Indians there. Actually, sir, you're so right. I not Pani Puri, it'd be Gold Gappas because they're only Punjabis the there. Only, sir, I have spoken more Punjabi in New Zealand than <laughs> I've ever spoken <laughs> in uh, Mumbai. I'm telling you, this is guaranteed. Uh, but anyway, uh, send in your answer on, uh, as the Punjabis call, the Titar. Oh, buddy. Yeah, send it on the Titar, hashtag uh, Joy Factor, hashtag Crick Buzz Live. Uh, any guesses? Any guesses? Any guesses? Any hints? Any clues? Not anything? Close. Any breadcrumbs? I don't the Hansels and Gretels? <laughs> <laughs> no? Nothing? Nothing? No? No. Okay. I'll ask a last simple question before going. I'm asking so many questions today. I feel like mega mind. Uh, the question I have for you is a guess of the score. If you would hazard one, please, in 20 overs, New Zealand will get... 168. 168. 159. 159. You can't get the ball. You can't get the ball. You can't get the I think that it's, India will win today, but I think that New Zealand will get 178. Sir, you can't get the ball. You can't get the ball. Batting first 2023, average score 128. In LKO? In Sayyid Mushtaq Ali. No, but in, in, Lucknow. in Lucknow? 128. Highest was 188, but there were some 60, 70. Oh, now so. this, uh, as the situation is <laughs> developing <laughs> rapidly, with this new information at hand, <laughs> I take my guess down to 147. But today will be the day 188 will happen. <laughs> so, just like you gave me two answers to the question, I'll put one on 147 and 177. No, I'm going with 177. Can you imagine losing twice? Rakh no, don't know. 177. Don't know, Rakh. Sir, do you want to share a song before? No, I was listening to my song. Sir, I'll listen to my song. Share a 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 song. This was Crick Buzz Live. We'll see you in... Kaha se leke hai isko?